Well, good evening, you all. Come to another edition of e Business Journal, and I have none other than the leading economist at the World Bank, who is Santiago Herrera. We are going to take an issue in relation to a presentation that he made right here, which has to do with growth, budget execution, and government effectiveness when it comes to developmental projects. So we'll get an in depth analysis with him. and. Uh, you see how this like some of the recommendations that the government could quality take advantage of. The Ghanaian economy, you have had opportunity to do some uh, feasibility studies, some research. But what is the general state of Ghana at the moment? At the moment, uh, there is uh, some short-term uh, volatility and risk. But in the long term, there is um, a good growth prospects. Um, and the future is bright. But the country has to do some reforms uh, to ensure that that uh, bright future materializes. You, you've made mention of two things, which has to do with the short-term volatilities and then uh, how do you call the future generation looking very better. But short-term volatilities, what exactly are we looking at? It's, uh, it's uh, derived from the macroeconomic volatility and macroeconomic uh, instability that uh, that is affecting the country now. All our models point at uh, uh, good positive growth in the long run. But the international experience shows that some countries' growth rate falls below the projected by these type of models that we have used uh, for Ghana. And uh, there are two factors that are common to the countries that fall below the projected growth rates and it's one of them is macroeconomic instability and the other one is the lack of progress in institutional reform. So basically the short term volatility has to do with the microeconomic indicators. If Ghana continues day in day out, year in year out, continue to spend more than its revenue, excess of its current account, boost the margin up, what will be the consequences for the nation year in year out? The consequence is that debt will keep on increasing. If, if the government or anyone, if you or, or I do permanent spending beyond my means, that is, my debt will continue increasing. Until what is the, the point that I can continue doing that? Until the, my bank continues lending me money until external creditors keep on uh, fi buying the Ghanaian uh, bonds it issues in the market. So it's a, uh, it's a, it takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. If, uh, if uh, the country wants to go issue bonds in international, or needs to go to issue bonds in the international market, there have to be buyers for the paper. Now, those are always willing to, to buy and take risks. That's what uh, investors do. They invest uh, taking risks, but they demand a premium for it. The higher the debt, the higher the risk, and hence the higher compensation they, they will demand. So if I get you perfectly right, you mean that the solution has to deal with uh, the country making sure that we don't exceed our revenue, we should spend within our revenue? That is uh, one possible interpretation is to, to reduce, and that is one direct uh, implication of this, to reduce volatility, the deficit has to, has to be reduced. And spending has to be done in a better fashion. From your presentation, you made mention of the fact that the future is bright. With all these, how do, were you able to project that to see that indeed the future of the country is bright? We estimate uh, Ghana's growth rate uh, that can be between 4 to 6% per capita. So uh, that's about uh, um, 6 to 8% per rate. year, growth rates per year. On average? on average for the period until mm, 2024 in a, in a long-term uh, horizon. Well, I don't really get it this time around. Two things, short-term volatilities, future generation being very bright. How do we come to terms with it? When should we expect the short-term volatilities to end for us to enjoy a better future generation? This exercise has been done for many countries in the past of projecting using these type of models. Mm -hmm. But when you compare what these models project with what actually happened, and you see that 
there are some countries that permanently fall below the, the projected levels by these type of models, mm -hmm. then those countries that fall permanently below, but that, ha that were growing very at very fast rates, and suddenly they start falling below the projected levels. That is what, what uh, some economists call growth traps. Mm -hmm. So there is a possibility that the country falls into a growth trap. It has happened to many countries. Are you content with some of the policies that have been taken by government recently to question, would it even work in the first place? Yes, yes, the government has taken brave measures um, that I haven't seen in, in other countries. Uh, so that is a, a very good start. But you see the exchange rate has continued depreciating. Inflation has kept going up. Uh, so, so you need to, to fine tune and calibrate uh, the, um, the policies to the extent that is possible. What are some of the recommendations that you could outline for the nation at this present moment for the nation? The important thing is to build the institutions, budget institutions that allow monitoring and execution of the budget. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that was Santiago Harari, who is a leading economist at the World Bank. We take an issue about one of the presentations that he just made mention of, which, uh, which has to do with proof, budget execution, and government effectiveness when it comes to budget monitoring. Uh, you just had him right. So that'll be all for e-business channel segments. <laughs>